In today's video, I test the new Fujifilm X-T5 against the Canon EOS R5 to see how it compares in a real world studio shooting situation. Now, I realize that these two cameras are on completely different planets when it comes to their price point. And originally, I just wanted to compare the image quality between the two bodies and see how the new 40 megapixel sensor in the Fuji compared to the 45 megapixel sensor in the Canon. But since I've already used the X-T5 on a number of shoots, I decided to give you my overall opinion of the camera as a studio shooter. Now, all of the images in this video were taken with this Fujifilm 18-55 2.8 lens and with the original Canon EF 70-200 2.8 lens. Let's talk about autofocus. The autofocus in the X-T5 is a massive improvement over the X-T4. But when I tested the X-H2, I did get a higher rate of tack sharp photos when using the same lens. With the X-T5 at a recent headshot session, I took 313 photos and 15 of them were not in focus. Now, this is an excellent hit rate, of course, but coming from the R5, which rarely, if ever, misses focus, even when using old lenses, I was honestly a tad disappointed to see even those 15 not quite sharp. Now, am I spoiled by the R5? Yes, I am. But there is one caveat here. When I shot with the X-H2, I was in continuous AF with eye tracking and release priority enabled. In my recent shoot with the X-T5, I had the camera set to single shot and focus priority to see how that worked. So what I think may have happened is that the camera locked in as I did a small burst of images and it couldn't adjust in order to get the next frame in focus. Now, because of this, I'm going to go back to shooting in continuous with eye tracking and release priority enabled because I think this is the best setup for portrait work with the Fuji cameras. One other critique I have regarding Fuji's autofocus system is with the interface. So far, I have found no way to set the camera so that the AF joystick can both activate all focus modes and change them, and also reset to the center focus point, which is something that's very easy to do on the X-T4. It'll do either one or the other, but not both. So as a workaround, I have it set so that a single press to the button will reset to the center point, but tilting the joystick in any direction will not only let you choose the AF point, but also let you choose the AF mode, which is a little annoying. Putting aside the AF speed, the actual user interface in the Canon is still better because it's very intuitive and quite simple to use in tracking mode. And I think this is something that Fuji can probably improve with firmware updates. So hopefully someone from Fujifilm gives this video a watch and takes that to heart. Let's talk about handling and ergonomics. The X-T5 is one of the most lovely cameras to use. It is a touch smaller than the X-T4 and it's quite a bit lighter while still feeling very solid. It actually feels a lot smaller than the 4 in practice though and the return of the tilt screen is a huge improvement over the fully articulated screen, which was really only useful for vlogging or YouTube purposes on the X-T4. Using the X-T5 on a tripod and tethered in a studio setting, however, leaves a little bit to be desired. First, if you use a tether block or a tripod with a kind of large base plate, it's going to cover the battery door, which will require you to remove the whole thing if you need to change the battery during the shoot. Now, luckily, the battery lasts a very long time, and it's a huge improvement over the old camera. So I don't think this will happen even if you have a three-hour session, if you're using a fully charged battery. It might not be an issue is what I'm saying. But this is also why the battery grip comes in handy, because it's very easy to change batteries on the fly when it's on a tripod. And I know that the X-T5 doesn't have a battery grip available, so I see, again, why this is a disappointment for some Fuji fans. Besides this, I'm really not a fan of the hard plastic terminal doors, and I think that the hard rubber with rubberized hinges is pretty much more practical, albeit not as nice looking. Now, the rubberized doors might not be as stylish, but they are certainly more durable since they can be easily swung out of the way when you're tethering or when you're shooting video and you have an external monitor attached. 
The hard plastic doors, however, have very little give, which makes me a bit nervous because I feel like if I bump the camera the wrong way, those little doors can snap right off. One area where the X-T5 wins hands down against the R5, in my opinion, is with the analog dials, which make changing the shutter speed aperture and ISO on the fly a real breeze and very intuitive. I actually prefer the combination of the analog and the tactile nature because there's no need to have all the information crammed on the screen of the camera only. And I appreciate the simplicity over the X-T5 because the Canon has so many buttons and so many screen options that for someone like me who's not you know, that young anymore, it can be a little overwhelming at times and confusing even after using the camera for about a year. The overall handling on the R5, however, is really excellent. And the user friendliness combined with the very nice grip and very nice size does make it tough to beat as an overall shooter. Another small but odd thing about the X-T5 is that it will not remember exposure simulation as part of a custom shooting mode. For instance, I set C1 as headshots because I don't want exposure simulation to be on while I'm in the studio and using flash. Then I set C2 as natural light with exposure simulation on so that I can preview what my image will look like on the screen before I take the shot. I realized, however, that it won't remember this one option, so I needed to manually change it even when switching from C1 to C2, which was a little annoying. Plus, you can't set a custom button for this option or add it to the quick menu for some reason. At least, I couldn't find a way to do this, so if I'm missing something here or I'm wrong here, which I hope I am, um, hopefully one of you will let me know in the comments section below. Let's get to the heart of the matter. As I mentioned already, my goal for this was at first just to compare the image quality between these two cameras because I, I don't think it's fair, obviously, to expect a $1,700 Fuji camera to perform as well as a $3,600 Canon camera. Also, I recently tested the X-H2 against the R5, and I was very pleased with that camera in terms of handling and performance when put toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Canon. But I imported the photos at the time into Lightroom, which I really think didn't show what the Fuji was capable of doing. So for these images, I use Capture One Pro, which handles Fuji files much better than Lightroom does. So let's check out these two headshots of my photographer buddy, Mason. First, let's look at them side by side. Now, can you tell which is the Fuji and which is the Canon? All right, now let's zoom in to 100% and look again before I tell you which is which. If you look very closely, you can see that the image on the right side is definitely sharper. And yes, that's the Canon image, but even at 100%, uh, they're pretty close in terms of detail, and actually this looks better than when I tested the X-H2, which again I think is due mostly to Lightroom and the way it handles the files. If you look at the detail area under his eyes, for instance, you can see there's more detail in the Canon for sure. But I was really pleased with how the Fuji compares, and for me, this, again, is where the camera really, really shines. The image quality is just awesome. And even though I wasn't surprised that the full frame 45 megapixel would be better than the APS-C size 40 megapixel one, it's pretty darn close. Now, if we zoom back out and we just stop with the crazy pixel peeping, you can see that both images look really wonderful with accurate color and great sharpness and great dynamic range. The Fujifilm is going to be a tad warmer than the Canon right out of the gate, but that's what I expected since the Canon tends towards the cooler tones. All right, so let's sum this up. Does the X-T5 stand a chance against the workhorse Canon EOS R5 in a fast-paced studio setting? Well, maybe not. The Canon is just a relentless beast and is designed to kick butt and take names, and the X-T5 is not gonna be that kind of a workhorse, nor did I expect it to be, and nor should we expect it to be. But when it comes to the overall performance and the images themselves, the Fuji really holds its own, and that was the original point of my test here, because I really wanted to give that sensor another go after using the X-H2. And now, what does all of this mean for, the, for using it in a real-world situation? Well, the honest truth, in my opinion, is that either camera is gonna work well for most applications, especially if you're just doing 
uh, headshots and portraits that are going to be seen on a screen. You're not doing commercial work that's going to be put on a billboard somewhere. And I do think the Fuji will still do a great job even in that situation. But the Canon, obviously, because it's a larger sensor and because it's more resolution, will be better. Also, if you're going to do a lot of cropping, so say you're taking an image that you want to crop in quite a bit, then you want all the resolution you can get, of, of course, and the Canon's going to do better. But I found that this little camera that could really did an admirable job as a studio shooter in the times that I used it in the studio for my professional work. Now, having said that, I'm not going to sell my R5 and go with an, X, an X-T5 as my main studio shooter. And that's really not why I got the camera. I got it more as a backup and more for uh, other kinds of uses that I do. But I do want to get my hands on an X-H2 one more time and see what the images look like in Capture One as opposed to Lightroom because I think they're going to be probably almost exactly the same now as the results I got from the X-T5. And I think that an X-H2 is going to be a more... Uh, even comparison when it comes to what the camera is designed for, obviously, to an R5 than an X-T5 is.